Welcome to this four-part Family and Parent Education Series on Eating Disorders. My name is Jadine Cairns and I'm a registered dietitian here at the BC Children's Eating Disorder Program in Vancouver, British Columbia. In this video, we will talk about some of the nutritional challenges faced by children and teens struggling with an eating disorder. Then we will be talking about what is normal nutrition and the consequences of starving or binge purging. We will also be talking about some of the ways that a parent may help a child or youth struggling with an eating disorder start to recover. As part of the recovery process, it is really important to eat normally. Food and nutrition is crucial for this stage of growth and development. Food as a fuel is really important to do all the things that the child or teen would want to do, to have fun, to socialize, to do school. And then there's the issue of metabolism. Food is the biggest promoter of metabolism. And if you undereat, you actually may drop your metabolism very quickly. If you undereat, you may actually also set yourself up for a sense of deprivation and overeating or binge eating. Normal eating consists of three meals and one to three or even four snacks. Usually, the meals consist of three to four food groups. The food groups are milk and milk products, breads and cereals, which is the grains group, meats and alternatives, and fruits and vegetables. When dealing with an eating disorder, fun foods are really important. Fun foods or desserts or extras category is something that you need to incorporate as your normal eating. Fat is also important to ensure that you get sufficient amounts of in your eating. If you do not have enough fat or fun food as part of your eating, there is a chance that you will feel deprived and be set up for cravings. And the portion size that's needed is dependent on the individual. Depends on what the young person is needing to grow and thrive. Most people eat in response to the internal signals of hunger and fullness. But for someone struggling with an eating disorder, those internal signals are just not effective. So external methods may be necessary. For a youth working on recovering from an eating disorder, the goal should be balanced eating. For example, food from all four food groups of Canada's Guide for Healthy Eating, plus fun foods that honour the taste buds. Examples of these fun foods would be cookies, cakes, desserts, chips. Fun foods are often the very first thing to go when an eating disorder develops. Sufficient fluids are also needed. There are individual variations but on the average, at least six to eight cups of fluids is required, depending on the physical state of the youth. And as in all things, moderation is important. All food consists of the following macronutrients. These are the only energy components that the human body can use. They are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Carbohydrates are in grains, in fruits and vegetables, and in milk products. Carbs are your best source of energy, especially for your brain. When we eat complex carbohydrates such as pasta or rice, they help us feel satisfied. Getting enough carbs also allows us to use our protein as protein and not expensive source of energy. Protein is important for building or rebuilding us. We are made of protein. It is also important for immunity and it's a source of satiety again, that feeling of being satisfied after we eat. So it protects against overeating. It is also essential for regulating our fluids electrolytes, blood clotting, and transporting oxygen throughout the body. In a growing, developing youth, insufficient protein can lead to stunting, learning impairments, a shrunken heart, anemia, which is low iron, and muscle weakness. Vegetarians need to beware. They need a bit more protein than non-vegetarians. Fat is much feared in the general press 
but it regulates appetite and allows us to feel really satisfied because it takes longest to digest. Also of note are the fat-soluble vitamins of A, D, E, and K. They actually need fat in the diet to absorb, digest, and transport these nutrients. It is really important for calcium to be noted at this point. Bone health is crucial for teens. Teens need an average of three to four servings of milk and milk products a day for optimum bone health. If weight restoration is required, a surprisingly large quantity of food is needed. Diet products such as low fat and low sugar foods are unhelpful for weight restoration or normalizing eating. Dependence on these foods strengthens the myth that guilt-free eating can only happen if it is low-cal or low-sugar foods. Activity and nutrition generally go hand in hand. Some exercise every day is generally the recommendation, provided that medical safety is accounted for. But if the exercise is being used to manipulate weight and shape, it needs to be looked at. A youth with an eating disorder often feels that they have to be physically active in order to give themselves permission to eat. Normal exercise often includes a mix of activity and intensity. There needs to be an assessment of the motivation of whether the exercise is balanced or whether there's an obsessiveness to it. If it becomes all important to the exclusion of other things, then again, it needs to be questioned. Warning signs for unhealthy or exercise addiction would be increased anxiety, sadness, or decreased self-worth for missed workouts. Also, the occurrence of frequent injuries, stress fractures, and continued exercise during those times are big warning signs. Believe it or not, the body is wise. It only selects those functions that are essential for living. The metabolism drops, the body temperature drops, hormones drop, hair falls out, and even the ability to concentrate urine gets diminished. Dr. Ansel Keys conducted a fascinating study during the Second World War. Healthy young men of average weight followed a starvation diet for six months with the goal of losing 25% of their body weight. After six months of starvation, the men were allowed to eat normally again. During the study, the men found that their hunger increased and they became preoccupied with food and eating. When we starve ourselves or semi-starve ourselves, things change in our focus, behavior, and physical body. In a previous segment, the physical consequences of starvation was discussed. The researchers also found that the men became lethargic, unmotivated, apathetic, irritable, quarrelsome, and they lost interest in social activities. They also spent more time alone. Memory and concentration was impaired too. When the men were allowed to eat whatever they wanted after their starvation period, they ate two to three times their normal amounts. This increase eventually did subside over time. With bulimia nervosa, semi-starvation still holds true. Metabolism still slows, hormones and periods can still be impacted. Obsessions and thoughts about food and eating are just as strong as someone who's struggling with anorexia or a restrictive eating disorder. There are a number of ways to support your youth at home. One is structured eating and meal support, and second is clear expectations and agreement by all those involved with the teen's care. Nutritional priority is dependent on what the youth needs at that time. The hierarchy is as follows. Adequacy, making sure we have enough. Balance, the food groups and the timing of the eating. Variety, and finally, the comfort with food. To truly get over an eating disorder, one needs to put away the desire to seek certain weight and shape with food rules or exercise habits. A combination of Canada's food guide and fun foods is really important. This will establish a positive relationship with food. Thank you very much for spending this time with us, and I hope this information is helpful for you and your family.